All right, everybody, have a seat, please. Our next talk is something that is essential to all of us. It's time to talk about how to future-proof our open source ecosystem and keep this community thriving. And with us, we have just the person for it. <laughs> she is a culture and recruitment strategist and head of the CloudFest Hackathon and major open source advocate. So give a big warm welcome to Carol Ollinger. Thank you so much, Lisa. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. And uh, yeah, Lisa already introduced me quite well, so everything's there. <laughs> I'm the culture and recruitment strategist at Yelp, also the head of Cloudfest Hackathon, and I consider myself an advocate for diversity, inclusion, and positive mental health in tech. Not only this community, a few more, but this is particularly dear to my heart. And I am originally from the small neighboring country, Luxembourg, but for nine years, I'm uh, living in this area of, uh, of Germany, the beautiful Eiffel. Uh, fun fact, it's only like 20 minutes drive from here. So I feel uh, in a way that I'm welcoming you all in my extended backyard. <laughs> Today, we're diving deep into the WordPress ecosystem. And while there are more actors uh, a part of this, uh, let's focus now on the two uh, main actors that stand out when we are talking about the WordPress open source project, the community and the business world. While both are integral to the WordPress ecosystem, they often operate in parallel with very minimal overlap and sometimes there even is a noticeable gap. But what if that gap is more than just a missed opportunity? What if bridging both worlds would be the key for a more sustainable future for WordPress? I believe this is what we need to start imagining a holistic and flourishing future for WordPress, equal partners striving for collaborative growth. And our journey today will focus on understanding the dynamics of these two actors and how we as a community can play a role in connecting them and bridging existing gaps for the continued growth and sustainability of WordPress. So let's start with the WordPress community involvement. What is so appealing about WordPress that so many of us start contributing as volunteers to the project? Most certainly the community itself, right? Uh, what are known and unknown costs of contribution connected here? Then we will analyze possible counter value for contributions with the goal to find a better balance. And last but not least, let's raise awareness for the unequal playing field in our community. All right, let's take a trip down memory lane. In 2016, my husband invited me to this thing called WordCamp Europe. For those unfamiliar, it is the biggest <laughs> WordPress conference. Somebody knows the story already. <laughs> it is the biggest WordPress conference in the world, one of three so-called uh, WordPress flagship events. Now picture this. I had no clue about what WordPress was at the time. And the idea of being uh, this non-technical woman heading into a swarm of 2,000 tech nerds, not really compelling. It felt like a, st like a scene straight out of the series The Big Bang Theory with me playing the role of Penny. To be honest, I was more intrigued by the trip to Vienna itself uh, than to the conference. And uh, yeah, the thought of being this beautiful city, like amazing weather, <laughs> having some shopping, sign me up for that. And I promised myself there's no way I'm gonna step foot into that conference venue. Well, that didn't go according to my plans. <laughs> the, very, the very evening I arrived, I was already making friends in the official event hotel, made dinner plans for the next day, made Facebook connections, and I even signed up to this platform formerly known as Twitter, because apparently that is where the WordPress community was on. So the people I met, honestly, some of the most open and inspirational souls I've ever encountered in my life. And as you've probably already guessed, that's when the community bug bit me. I was all in. And I began attending more WordCamps, started volunteering, speaking, organizing some of them uh, myself. And by 2017, I was fully immersed uh, in the WordPress community and the business world. So that's what the WordPress community feels like to more or less 
All of us? It's love at first sight? Why is that? The community is open to anyone, regardless of skill level or background. Whether you're just starting out or you've been coding for years already, there's most likely a place here for you. With countless resources available, the community champions continuous learning and professional growth. From local meetups to, to global WordCamps, to, to numerous online uh, spaces like Slack teams, uh, social media, networking opportunities are literally everywhere. So it's pretty easy to connect and stay connected. The community is filled with individuals who are passionate about WordPress. Be it its open source nature or its ability to democratize publishing, the passion that members feel often derives from the meaningful work they do, because knowing that you're contributing to a platform that powers a huge percentage of the web can be incredibly fulfilling, right? The community has many inspiring people who serve as role models, sharing their success stories and encouraging newer members to engage and to contribute. The passion and inspiration felt with the WordPress community not only draws people in, but also keeps them engaged. The emotional connection, the practical benefits of community volunteering, creating a powerful allure that is hard to resist. The so-called community bug I mentioned earlier. But is that all there is? Or are we facing a double-edged sword here? While success stories can inspire and motivate, they can also create pressure and set unrealistic expectations. People feel not good enough, which can eventually lead to imposter syndrome. Who is familiar with the imposter syndrome in this room? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, about what I thought. <laughs> The sense of belonging and opportunities for engagement in the community are enormous, yet it is easy to get involved too deeply, often at the, personal, uh, often at the cost of personal time and work-life balance. The passion and dedication to contributing may encourage people to go the extra mile towards the personal growth and success, but sometimes it pushes individuals too far, risking burnout and sidelining other life priorities like health. And then there's the open source nature of WordPress. It's a model that promotes collaboration, inclusivity and transparency. But the absence of direct financial rewards means many contribute without pay, challenging the sustainability of such contributions. And there is a striking imbalance. Primarily those who can or think they can afford to contribute are being heard. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of talking today. <laughs> the longer you are part of the community, the more evident it becomes that this highly inspiring and addicting environment does have negative long-term effects of, on some of the community members. We witness stress, anxiety, burnout amongst our contributors and a lot of turnover in general. During WordCamp US 2019 already, Alain Schlesser, who is here in this room as well, took an in-depth look at why such an uplifting and exciting environment can have detrimental effects on some of its members. And uh, on a side note, this is a very good example in the spirit of sustainable contribution that we don't always have to start from scratch. We can build upon the excellent work already done by others, provided we give proper credit where it's due. With that in mind, I will now share some key insights from Alain's lightning talk, which I recommend you to watch on WordPress TV at some point. Alain believes that the negative long-term effect can be traced back to a very simple root cause. Cost. Everything we do comes with a cost attached. This isn't always financial cost. It can, usually, it can also be the combination of several different costs, like mental, emotional, or even social cost. He says the best way to cover costs in general is money. But in open source projects, a lot of people are not paid for their contributions and don't receive money for covering their cost. What contributors to WordPress usually tread instead is time. And unlike money, time is a limited and irrepla irreplaceable resource. 
when you invest excessive time in contributions, you are spending part of the time that should rather go into your family or self-care with sometimes devastating long-term effects. And then there are more types of costs you might have to pay as an open source contributor. Opportunity cost, for example, the value of the next best alternative that you give up when you are contributing to the project, so the income you could have earned instead, for example. Financial cost, sometimes you may need to invest in software, in hardware or travel to be able to contribute effectively. The software is free, but that isn't necessarily true for what you want to achieve. Social cost, the potential consequences on social life and relationships due to time and emotional investment in contributions. Reputation cost, the risk of public failure or backlash, which could have implications on both your professional and personal reputation. Physical health may suffer due to extended hours, stress, burnout, lack of work-life balance. But contributing comes very often with this overlooked cost, mental health issues. We are often inspired by others, but it can also lead to a spiral of comparison. If you are an unpaid volunteer, contributor, raise hands, please. Huh? Quite a bunch. How many times did you caught yourself already thinking, others are doing so much, I need to keep up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Been there? <laughs> this becomes even more challenging when you start comparing yourself to those who are sponsored part-time or full-time. Those contributors are paid for their involvement, allowing them to do more. Sometimes this is public knowledge, who is sponsor contributor and who is not, but sometimes we don't know. And yet it is very easy to forget about this and feel that you are falling short with what you're doing. Then there's also the helper's high phenomenon. There's a genuine, genuine euphoria in contributing, in helping others, in making a difference. It releases endorphins, it makes you feel good about yourself and your place in the community, but this very sensation can become addictive, pushing us far beyond our individual limits. That drive to keep up with others, combined with this euphoric help us I, creates pressure which can escalate into stress, anxiety and burnout, and even depression. While high community involvement brings many benefits, we must confront this other side of the coin. Over-involvement has real consequences, not just for our mental and physical well-being, but also for our relationships, our work, our professional and, per, uh, and personal growth. I'd like to cite the wonderful Juliet Reinders Vollmer, a friend of mine and long-term WordPress core contributor, and here's what she shared just a few weeks back at WordCamp the Netherlands. Open source software is not free. It comes with a cost, with a huge cost. That being said, let's face the reality here. The WordPress open source project survives because people are burning out for it. It's crucial to remember that WordPress is not just code. It's built on real people with real emotions, real challenges and real limits. And the sustainability of open source should never come at the unsustainable lives of its contributors. Of course, WordPress and its community also offers immense value and opportunities to both its users and its contributors. And in our next segment, we'll dive deeper into the counter value for contributors and the unequal playing field. I love this slide so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's even a little bubble. <laughs> we are all different and unique individuals, and that's great. We bring a distinct set of motivations, desires and goals in this room and in the global WordPress community. When it comes to open source contributions, especially in a vibrant and diverse community like ours, the personal returns or counter value that contributors can widely defer. Do you, as a contributor, to this open source project, know and understand, truly understand your personal why. 
While the overarching goal could be to support and nurture the open source project, what else drives you? Let's start discovering and having open conversations about individual motivators. Here are just a few examples. They may not resonate with you or you may feel, oh, this is all true for me. For example, recognition. We all want to be acknowledged for the work that we're doing, right? Um, having an impact, making a tangible difference on the web. Career opportunities, obviously. Community itself, like being a part of this community, uh, which provides a strong sense of belonging. Financial, obviously, uh, contributing can lead to potential partnerships. Knowing your why is a great place to start, but where can it lead towards? Regular introspection allows us to discover and reconnect with our intrinsic motivations. Without this clarity, we risk aimless effort. Human beings are designed to evolve. Our personal and professional landscapes change every day. We change, and that's great. Life would be pretty boring if we wouldn't. It's vital to acknowledge when your motivation for contribution changes, ensuring that what you do is aligning with your current goals. Regularly evaluate the outcome of what you're doing. Is, this what, you, is, is what you're doing matching the intended goals? And adapt to what you're doing if that's not the case. Or, in business terms, check the return on investment for your contribution. An open dialogue about individual motivation fosters understanding and collaboration. It helps building a more transparent and honest environment where everyone can experience a true and holistic sense of belonging. Here's what you should not do <laughs> when contributing. Please, don't repeat the same actions every single day and expect a different outcome. Stop it. No matter what anyone out there told you, it makes no sense and it is really not sustainable. Instead, take a deep look into yourself, into your desires, and empower other folks to do the same, so we can all become mindful contributors. Saying to yourself or to others, if you only tried long enough or maybe hard enough, not only creates unrealistic unrealistic expectations, but also actively contributes to burnout. We must start prioritizing the well-being of our community instead of accepting that people are burning out for this project. The WordPress project, praised for its inclusivity and global community, still has many challenges of creating an equal playing field for all its contributors. Not everyone has the same chance to be heard. Here's an often referred to WordPress open source principle. Decisions are made by those who show up. Sounds good, right? But what if you can't show up? Consider contributors from challenging time zones, for example. They often miss out on real-time interactions due to odd hours. Likewise, parents struggling childcare during important meetings or contributors having other duties, like their job, other family members volunteering, they may not always get a chance to pitch in, even if they have very valuable insights to share. Think of those who don't speak English as a second or third language, like myself. They may have great ideas, but what if they struggle to articulate their thoughts in the best way in a foreign language? Especially in fast-paced, real-time conversations, this makes it so much harder for them being heard. And this can be true for neurodivergent individuals, too. They often process and pass information very differently. This can lead to misunderstandings or them simply being overlooked, especially in formants that do not cater to their unique communication styles. Let's also face the reality that white men are still the most represented and visible part of the project. They simply get more attention, while others might be more easily overlooked. And I've witnessed and experienced myself many times how the same idea can be valued very differently 
based on who shares it. And I'm sure I'm not the only one in this room having made this experience. This is why representation truly matters. It is not about pointing fingers. It is about realizing there is room to do better. And in theory, everyone should have an equal chance to contribute and benefit, but we are not there yet. And is this really the message we want to spread in terms of sustainable contribution? I believe we can do better as a community, and we should. Not to mention that besides, one would have to be very privileged to comply with this principle. It is um, definitely not how decisions are actually made in this project. I did never say that. I already gave you a spoiler during the introduction uh, to this session that um, while the WordPress project thrives, partly on the dedication of its community, there is an equally compelling actor to consider. The business world. Whether you are a community member, an active contributor to the project, or a business owner, this next section is equally addressing all of your perspectives. Let's explore together how the lines between open source contribution and business goals are connected, revealing both opportunities and challenges in this dynamic ecosystem. As we shift our focus to the business world, We'll start with analyzing why companies might be hesitant to invest in the project. To understand this, we need to dive into return on investment, ROI, in open source. We'll continue with building a business case that aligns with the community's values. And we'll wrap up with some key takeaways from the business world paving the way forward. So why do businesses hesitate to contribute and invest into WordPress? First, there's unclear return on investment. Direct contributions to open source may not offer clear and measurable benefits. We're going to talk more about that one on the next slide. There are resource concerns. Allocating funds, money, hu human resources, it's a difficult term, without direct financial gains can be seen as a direct loss, especially for smaller companies. Lack of control. In open source projects, businesses can't dictate or influence the project's direction. And potentially, the, the, the outcome is not aligning with their business goals. Companies may worry about exposing their work to public criticism and eventually facing legal implications. Cultural mismatch. The community-driven values Oh, um, of, of this open source project might simply not fit with every business's values or culture. And this is not a bad thing. It's just something to be aware of. So let's have a closer look into return on investment in open source. Businesses often seek immediate financial returns, looking for a clear and measurable benefit. By doing so, they may risk missing out on the indirect and long-term benefits that open source contribution offers. From boosting reputation to fostering business partnerships and attracting top talent, the indirect advantages can significantly impact growth and brand presence. Many companies, especially investor-driven ones, focus on short-term gains over long-term benefits. While contributing might offer long-term advantages like goodwill, networking and influence, eventually leading to sales and new partnerships, they are often harder to quantify and measure. But this is really, really, really important. The unmeasurable is not unvaluable. Not all benefits can be measured, yet they, are, they significant, significantly impact businesses. I learned this from my good friend Marike van Racht during her inspiring talk at WordCamp the Netherlands a few weeks back. I think there's people in this room who have been attending the session. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really good talk. I, I highly recommend you watch that on WordPress TV as well. And Marike also started a really cool mini blog series called The Two Worlds of WordPress, which aligns perfectly with uh, the session of, uh, yeah, with today's uh, topic. So is there a way to build a business case benefiting all parties involved? Small and big companies have lots 
of responsibilities, especially towards their employees and families. For them to support the community, they need a clear business case. Very often, the cost of potential investments are way above of what community volunteers might be aware of. I'm, I'm going to give you an example. A top-tier sponsorship for a major WordCamp might cost between 50 and 100k today, is that about right? I think I remember 75k for WordCamp Europe or so. Then you add the cost for a fancy booth, like furniture, uh, travels and accommodations for your crew, because you have to bring people to, to be present and to represent your company. You have to pay for their work time. You also have to consider that they are not working on your product or on your service that you are actually offering. You're easily looking at a 200k investment. The ratio becomes even worse for smaller companies on lower tier of sponsorships. This is not just about giving back anymore. There's a real cost here too. And I bet every business owner in this room would agree with me that they need to see a possible return on such an investment. For more companies to support open source, we need to show and highlight the potential lying in the WordPress community. Yes, the software is theoretically free, but community's knowledge, that's priceless. It's worth being on the lookout to uh, showcase that invaluable knowledge and then also starting to actively embrace the opportunities for creating potential win-win situations instead of looking away because we don't talk about money, right? It's essential to then create open and safe spaces where we can transparently discuss and drive such opportunities with the ultimate goal to ensure that every member of our community then gets a fair shot to actually benefit from the thriving industry we are building all together. In our digital ecosystem, where innovations come at lightning speed, especially thinking of AI at the moment, like it's like daily changes, weekly changes, the projects lifeline depends on its ability to grow and to adapt. But to do that, it clearly needs resources, which means corporate investment is vital. Big corporations need to recognize and respond to the influence they have in this project while still taking into account return on investment of their actions, and rightfully so. Major players in the industry get significant reports from open source, yet with such benefits come responsibilities if you want that to continue. Waiting for the next cycle of contributors to burn out for the project while monetizing their efforts is neither ethical nor sustainable. In the ever-changing landscape I mentioned before, the turnover in volunteer contributors will soon enough not do it anymore. Especially because we are also not actively enough involving newer generations. On the other hand, if we as a community want more investment, it is crucial to understand the business angle and openly talk about return on investment. It is not enough to share the same old story about giving back. And it is simply not fair to expect from volunteer contributors that are unpaid to use this argument over and over and over again to get big corporate players to open their pockets towards the project. The WordPress community stands at a crossroad here and the narrative needs to evolve. And it has to resonate with both the altruistic visions and business-centric business -centric motivations of both actors. As a community, we can guide companies to recognize that their investment in the project is not just about giving back. It is about shared growth. Imagine the WordPress project as a pie. As the whole project grows, that pie becomes bigger. And with it, everyone's individual share becomes bigger and more substantial. The bigger the pie, 
the bigger your slice you're taking out of it. And this is equally true for freelancers, employees, small businesses, medium-sized business, and big corporations. As we dive to the final part of our discussion today, let's envision together a more sustainable future for WordPress. The goal? To ensure the project doesn't just survive, but thrives, adapting to changing times without sacrificing the well-being of its contributors. Here's some ideas. In the open source world, discussions about money and business can sometimes be sidelined or even discouraged. And that's clearly holding us back. It creates an unequal playing field once more, where promising financial opportunities are often only accessible to those in the right networks or the inner circles. To seize the full potential of the WordPress open source project, it is crucial the community starts talking openly about business topics and money. I said it out loud. This approach would not only unlock a multitude of benefits, it would also democratize opportunities, giving every stakeholder a fair shot. Such an environment would also fuel fresh ideas, entrepreneurship, and cultivating a culture of innovation and growth. Transparent business discussions can set a valuable foundation for a more inclusive and sustainable future while drawing more investment into our community at the same time. Win-win, I like that. WordCamps, events. Our three flagship events are great. But it could be so much more with an open and clear business focus. Because let's face it, they are already commercial in nature. They are. But yet, by not actively and openly promoting a business perspective, we are limiting transparency and access to potential opportunities. By introducing innovative new formats, we can create space for everyone in the community. Let's become creative and harness the potential of the next generation of WordCamps, which is a new project that the community team launched, and I think it has also been discussed during this Contributor Day. I'm really excited to see what the outcome is going to be. So I believe that there is room for both WordPress business events and community events that cherish the traditional barcam experience, and more. Also, step outside your bubble occasionally, attend other B2C and B2B events, like Logfest, for example. Broaden your horizon and be inspired by new ideas. Be curious and learn from different communities. By the way, inside our WordPress bubble, there is an amazing platform and community called Post Status, which I highly recommend all of you if you don't know it yet, uh, if you want to dive deeper into the business world of WordPress. Finally, it's also crucial that we, start, that we start seeing and treating WordCamp sponsors as equal partners, not as a necessary evil. Crafting more compelling return on investment business cases for them will not only attract more investment, but also promote collaborative growth for the project. And by embracing this new approach, the result would be more inclusive, vibrant, productive, and financially sustainable WordPress events. They would no longer be just community gatherings, but also strategic platforms for collaboration and business growth. Once we start to harness the full potential of our events, we'd see better and more diverse engagement levels as well, increased sponsor participation and a community that thrives on both its open source and business-driven achievements. For a sustainable future of WordPress, we need to find that balance between passionate community contributions and thriving business events. Business interests. Events as well, could be the same. <laughs> to all WordPress contributors out there. It is essential to engage mindfully, ensuring your well-being at all time. That's your own responsibility in the end. You can look out for others, but you also have to realize that there's nothing ever more important than your own health. Regularly evaluate priorities, motivations, and counter value when contributing. And if you are not ready to do that, then please don't contribute. 
it's that easy. On the flip side, you business leaders, you have the responsibility to recognize and fairly reward these contributions. Remember, there's this flies out of the WordPress file. You want that to grow, right? And this isn't, this isn't just about ethics. It's about ensuring the sustainability and growth of the WordPress project as a whole. By fostering, and, um, op by fostering open and transparent dialogue about business engagement, we are starting bridging the gaps between our two worlds of WordPress. And to wrap up today's session, just a few key takeaways. Ensure contributions are sustainable. It's about balancing effort with meaningful results. And we need to stop accepting burnout and relying on the next contributor cycle to take over the previous one. Every contributor has a unique starting point. Not all voices are being heard. And whether you're a contributor yourself, a user, or involved as a WordPress, uh, in a WordPress business, awareness is key here. There is an unequal playing field. Destigmatize the topic of money and embrace the business angle. Let's start having open dialogue about bridging the gap between our community and the business world. And it's this synergy that will drive the future success of WordPress, creating a flourishing ecosystem with countless opportunities for everyone involved. Thank you. <laughs> that was it. Thank you so much for that, Carol. Now to the questions. Please Hi, raise yeah. your hands and I will come to you with the mic. Any questions? Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, for context, this is my first WordCamp and I'm a very new contributor. Oh, that's interesting. So Welcome to the missing, community. <laughs> yeah, so I may be missing a lot of context here, but I was wondering if you have any specific models in mind of how this business uh, contributor collab could take place? Is it like businesses are sponsoring yeah, contributors I, directly? Is there like a fund that they pay into and then there's a committee? That, like, how does that work? So there are, there are a lot of initiatives out there, but the problem in my opinion is that they are based on this narrative that we are trying to convince uh, our partners from the business world that it is their duty to give back. It is not it's not that this is not actually true but i wouldn't i wouldn't say it that way the thing is if you want this to continue if you want to make if you want to be possible to still have a business that is thriving in this ecosystem you have to make sure that the ecosystem itself is thriving right so I just would change the narrative. This is not about you have to give back as a business because you're taking out something. It's like, hey, we all want this cake to become bigger or this pie to become bigger. So how can we do that together? So that's, that's the one part um, of, of the problem that we're facing right now, in my opinion, that's the narrative. And the other, on the other hand, it is unethical what is happening at the moment. There are a lot of people since I joined community in 2016 that I don't see around anymore, where I know they have been facing like severe health issues because they were completely burning out for it. Also because they were sometimes having unrealistic expectations. They, they, they came to, 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 to an event. They were facing this inclusive community and everybody told them, oh yeah, if you get involved, there, there's, there, there's, this, there's, this, there's a, a wide range of opportunities for you, but nobody is actually sharing what fields are leading to those opportunities and what fields are not. So I see people trying hard every day to achieve something, to be able to become sponsored, to be able to have other job opportunities, but they are, they are working hard in an invisible field of this project or they don't have the right voice. So that's what I'm meaning with the unequal playing field. What I think is, so I don't have a built, ready-built solution for that. Oh, if I had, that would be awesome. But there are initiatives out there, like for example, the, the WordPress sustainability team who are uh, actively at the moment trying to, to make these conversations happen. And that, that was my goal here. I want to play my part in creating um, 
yeah, in, in opening, in, in raising awareness so these conversations can start happening. I think everything starts with becoming aware that there is a gap, that there's an unequal playing field, there's unethical things happening in our community, and we should just uh, not close our eyes and try to build something uh, where we all can benefit from what we are working on. I'm not sure if that answered your question. <laughs> Tomorrow I have a solution. <laughs> Any more questions? Don't be shy. I know you have them. Hi, uh, you've talked about the volunteers on one side and mm -hmm. companies on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, do you also see a role in your new narrative for uh, the public sector? Because there's a lot of policy aimed at becoming less dependent on big technology firms yeah. and uh, closed platforms of technology. And I think there's a big momentum there to also have uh, ways of reaching these policy makers and also enabling them to become more visible in sponsoring or uh, supporting the WordPress community. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this, is a, this is a really brilliant question. And uh, I'm like, oh my God, I've never thought about that. You know why? Because I've been working for government in Luxembourg for so many years and I was so fed up with it. So I'm mean, staying away from this topics as far as I can. But you are so, so right. And I have to admit, it never crossed my mind. But immediately while you were talking, I was like, oh my God, there's so many topics where we have to involve these actors, like for example, privacy, um, and then also, I know that there have, there have been initiatives also in terms of, in open source, for example, like all the different professions that are represented here, there is, there is now, um, how do you call it, Gewerkschaft? Yeah, there's no union uh, that, that, would in, that would defend the interests of what we are all doing here. Like if you are a software engineer, if you are a designer, so there's no way that we can, for example, start certifying what we're doing and that, that, that you have actually uh, some kind of, of, of proof of skill sets that people are bringing in, certifications and stuff. So that's also something that comes into my mind. So basically, I have absolutely no answer to your question, but it is brilliant to, to include that. And I hope that uh, someone's taking uh, notes for the sustainability team here. And uh, I'm, do, you, do you know, Simon, if that is, has been a, a topic of conversation already? But it, it's it's really good point, is it? So I have no answer to your question, but I'm forwarding it to the sustainability team <laughs> so, they can, so they can wrap their minds around it. Würde jemand mich auf Englisch übersetzen? Um, dazu, also Designer zum Beispiel können in einer Gewerkschaft sein bei Verdi und ich weiß, dass Verdi auch sich darum kümmert, dass nicht nur wir Designerinnen äh, in der Künstlersozialkasse sein können, sondern dass auch Dinge getan werden für andere EinzelfreiberuflerInnen. Ähm, zum Beispiel, dass die Krankenversicherung nicht mehr ganz so teuer ist für mhm. BerufsanfängerInnen. Das ist auch Verdi zu verdanken. Mhm. Also insofern, ich weiß nicht genau, wie das ist mit Entwickelnden, in welche Gewerkschaft die gehen können, ob die auch zu Verdi gehen können. Aber Informiert euch mal. Es ist nicht so, dass Gewerkschaften nur für Menschen in Festanstellungen sind. Also ich äh, bin ein bisschen aktiv bei Verdi mhm. und das waren am Anfang meiner Selbstständigkeit auch wirklich die Leute, die mir geholfen haben, die mir ohne extra Geld zu verlangen gute mhm. Vorträge gehalten haben mhm. und so. Mhm. Also ja, mag das jemand mal eben ja. übersetzen? Okay, the translation I tried um, was that uh, there is a Verdi, which is a union in Germany, um, and as a designer, you can be part of it, even if you're not employed, um, also if you're freelancing, and I kind of um, fight it for, it's called Künstler Sozialkasse, which is kind of for, oh God, how to explain that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's more about um, health insurance and, yeah. Yeah, and, I, I, yeah, and like pension and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The, so the recommendation was to inform is this is a possibility for you? And yeah. also the question, yeah. if this also exists for developers and not only yeah. for designers. So I think, um, so uh, thank you very much for the information. I think that uh, we, we're talking about two different things. So maybe I express myself not in a, in, a, in a very clear way. What I was referring to is like more on the, on the, on the global 
uh, area, in the global area, in the global field. That um, so I wasn't really I wasn't really thinking about health insurance and 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 rights and and um, yeah all of that that uh, social security stuff, but more about how this is happening in our community and about the value of the professions that we are all uh, exerting. Is this in English? Exerting here. Um, that it is not really protected. So um, everyone can say, okay, I'm a web developer, I'm a WordPress developer, I'm, uh, I'm a WordPress designer, I'm a software architect, I'm a software engineer, I'm whatever. So it is not, it is not really clear who does what. Um, and uh, um, people that are doing a, a brilliant job for years, they are in, in, in competition with people that are using the same, uh, the very, very same titles for what they are doing. And there's absolutely no clarity about that. And then if you are leaving the open source sector, so let's say, okay, you have been working with WordPress companies for years as a freelancer, as a volunteer, as whatever you've been doing. And then, for example, you would say, okay, now I'm going to go work to, to a government-based uh, organization. What is your certification? What, is, what have you done? Like, what, what, how it's not protected in any way. So that was what I was referring to. That was at least what um, Flores' uh, question was like, uh, um, yeah, what it, what, it, um, what it meant. What it yeah. meant. <laughs> but it started in my brain. <laughs> my brain is tired by now. <laughs> so yeah. But thank you so much for the information, and I think for the for the German uh, WordPress community, that is a really really valuable advice. Uh, my my point is uh, about all those small things uh, in the WordPress community, uh, which are done uh, like translation, like support, uh, <clears throat> like. Uh, uh, answering to uh, requests for um, giving more permissions and things like that. There are so many small parts uh, and I think we need funding for those small people. And it's mm -hmm. discussed for years now, mm -hmm. uh, how do we collect money and how do we get this money to so many people who are doing small jobs? Uh, because they are not funded and it's not about, okay, you are now full-time contributing and this is your uh, salary. Uh, we are talking about uh, freelancing people that have very small jobs, but mm -hmm. important jobs in mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. And how do we collect money and get this money to those very, very uh, many small people? So I, I have was no answer to this i was uh, when i was uh, building those slides and crafting this talk i was thinking about those things exactly because these th that everything that all these people are doing is not visible and that's the thing like these people are these people are also burning out very invisibly and it 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 is not a good thing i was about to say a swear word i can't so easy answer if it is an easy answer is starting to talk about money about on, on both sides. If we can start talking about what we as a community and in the volunteer-driven project can do for businesses, they can start talking about what they can do in return if we can create a win-win situation. So I think that what, what, what we are doing as a community is sharing this old narratives for, I don't know, since, since I am in the community and you are in the community way longer than I am. So it's always about, okay, but look, you have to give back. Like there's all this stuff which is really important for your business too, and I'm doing it, and, my, and, and so many other people are doing it, but you have to give back. That's five for the future, yada, yada. This is not wrong, but this is not being heard. So when we are doing this for 10 years or 12 years now, and it's not being heard, why are we doing it? Why wouldn't we go uh, a different direction and start talking about money in a holistic sense? So, in, in German, we would say, "Warum rollen wir das? Uh, warum zäumen wir das, Herd, das Fett von hinten auf?" We should, we should try a different narrative. We should try to give businesses the platform to openly talk about their goals as well, what they take out of the community, but also what they can invest into the community to take out more of it. But we don't. We, we cannot do that at the moment. So, and that, that's that's how I see. That's what I see. A good start for having those conversations. <laughs> thank you, Shen. Thank you, Carol, and thank you for a lively discussion. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up here. <laughs>
all good. Yeah. I'm here. Well, we have a gift for you. Oh, thank you. A, thank you for <laughs> thank you so your thoughts much. with us. Oh, it's for my lunch. <laughs> so thank you for coming to this talk and enjoy your lunch. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.